Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Church in Pasadena. Welcome to all members, friends, and guests here in person and virtually. My name is May Colcord and I'm a member of your Board of Trustees. Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community of faith connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the lands and waters of this campus. With respect for the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories and commit to decolonizing our own practices, to learning new ways of being in community and with each other, in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by our guest speaker, Dr. Tamisha Tyler, with music by our music director, Dr. Zanita Robles, and associate music director, Wells Lang. Please take a moment to silence your devices as we begin our service. Thank you for joining us as we continue to prioritize connection over perfection in this hybrid service, which is streamed and recorded on YouTube. Families with young children are welcome in the sanctuary or in the narthex. Today is the last day to submit an event for Dining for Dollars. Dining for Dollars is where neighborhood members donate fun events or services that are auctioned off during two bidding days in late January. There are, there are a great variety of events that create community and entertainment while financially supporting neighborhood church. You can find a link to the submittal form and more information in the most recent newsletter and on the church's website. Um, and I know I just told you to put your phones away, but I have a save the date for you. On February 4th, we'll be holding Omega's installation ceremony here on campus in the afternoon. You are all invited and welcome to attend. More details will be coming soon. Our order of service and more extensive announcements are available as a link in the Sunday email, posted in the narthex, or through the QR code on the back of your hymnal. You can always get more information on these and many other activities at the welcome table. Again, welcome to Neighborhood Church, whoever you are and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Welcome to this inclusive faith, community connected by love, spirit, and service. I've invited my friend, our, you might know him already, he's one of our wonderful members, but he's also a percussionist extraordinaire. This is Simon Carroll joining us for today's service. Our prelude will be an improvisation.
Okay. Check, check. Oh, this is a hot mic. Good morning. <laughs> I won't yell into the mic. Um, how many of you, by a show of hands, know what the Kwanzaa celebration is? Very good. So if I say Habarigani, you say Koumba. Repeat after me, say Koumba. So, Kaumba is today, we celebrate creativity. Kwanzaa began in 1966, started by Dr. Malana Karenga as a way to create a non-Christian African-American holiday where people across the diaspora could understand their own principles, their heritage, and their culture. It goes from December 26th to January 1st, and today is the day of Kaumba. Say Kaumba. So if I say Abayagani, you say? Kaumba. Very good. We welcome you, and I'm very excited for us to celebrate today. I would yell and say we light this candle in remembrance of our own creativity, of the gifts that we offer our community, and of the one who created all things. Welcome, Dr. Tamisha. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our opening hymn Number 1056, you don't really need to know that, you just need to look up at the screen. To la Cliseo, please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing. <clears throat> I'll start you off. To la Cliseo, na la pase caia. To la Cliseo, na la pase caia. Hey, na la pase Good morning. Good morning. I'm Matt Vasco, Neighborhoods Director of Spiritual Exploration. It's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. Uh, there was a time in my life when I would have found these percussion instruments too tempting not to touch. <laughs> so I think for that reason, we'll have the kids stay in their seats today. <laughs> and I'll share something someday by Amanda Gorman and with illustrations by Christian Robinson. You are told that this is not a problem, but you're sure there's something wrong. It's kind of a messy, cluttered street. 
you are told that this cannot be fixed, but you know you can help. You are told that this is too big for you, but you've seen the tiniest things make a huge difference. You're told that this won't work, but how will you know if you never try? You're told to sit and wait, but you know people have already waited too long. You're told that what's going on is very, very sad, but you're not just sad, you're scared, you're confused, you're angry. And maybe, just maybe, a little hopeful. We see one flower growing up through the clutter. You're told not to hope, but you keep hoping anyway. Sometimes you feel like you're all alone, but someday, somewhere, you find a friend, someone who will hope with you, who believes in your dream, someone who will fight with you. You make a promise to each other. You say, there is a problem, but it's our problem together, so we can fix it together. This problem is big, but together we are bigger. They're planting a plant. You make another friend and tell them, it's okay to be sad. We see that the plants didn't make it. And they tell you, sometimes we lose, but that's all right. We'll try again. And so you do, together, working, together, beginning, over and over and over and over. And we see them starting again. Until you're no longer beginning, you're winning. And we see the plants flourishing. Suddenly, there's something you're sure is right. Something you know you helped fix. Something small that changed. Something big. Something that worked. Something that makes you feel hopeful, happy, and loved. And we see people tending to a small garden, a small community garden on the street. Something that is not a dream, but the day you live in. I'm going to say that again, those beautiful words. Something that is not a dream, but the day you live in. Something that makes you smile as you tell someone else the end. So Reverend Omega was not able to be with us today, but she did send snacks. <laughs> so please stay after service for coffee and refreshments on the patio. Thank you. And we're all in for the whole service today. Giving is a spiritual practice through which we put our values into action. Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% of its contributions to a local social justice organization or activity. 
In addition to the plate, online giving is available using the QR code on the donations box just outside the sanctuary or using the text instructions shown on the screen. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contribute to church operations, make a note in the subject line or use an envelope available at the donation box. This week, our gifts go to the Neighborhood People of Color group. Here to tell us more is Corrine Grant. Corrine. Good morning. Neighborhood People of Color is the longest running BIPOC, which stands for Black, Indigenous, and Other People of Color, spiritual affinity group within our Uni Unitarian Universalist Association. This group was created in 2005 by and for Black, Indigenous, and other People of Color members at Neighborhood Church. Neighborhood People of Color is a vital part of our community, providing a safe and supportive space for individuals from diverse backgrounds to come together, share experiences, and foster spiritual growth. Through monthly meetings, this group promotes spiritual support and fellowship, addressing the unique needs and challenges faced by members of the BIPOC community within our congregation. Neighborhood People of Color plays a crucial role in fostering diversity, inclusion, and understanding within our community. This year, in Park hosted an amazing community dance during Juneteenth weekend. By supporting this group, you're not only helping individuals to connect with their spirituality, but you're also contributing to the strength and vi vibrancy of our congregation. Your generous support will help neighborhood people of color continue to provide a welcoming and empowering environment for BIPOC members. Thank you for your generosity. Would the volunteers please come forward?
I didn't know it was <laughs> my turn. I was like, yeah, keep going, it's great. <laughs> so today, as the six out of, I gotta stay for the people on YouTube, six out of seven days um, is not only a celebration of creativity, but in the true spirit of um, collaborative creation, there was a group in uh, Chicago around 1971 that created a feast of remembrance called Karamu, which is a time that you remember and reassess for the new year. So in addition to celebrating Kaumba, which is the day of creativity, many communities also celebrate the feast of Karamu, 
which is a time to reassess the year, to recommit to the deliberative practices of a community, and to name how you are going to participate in that. So in the spirit of that, in the spirit of creativity, I figured I'd read you some of my own work. So I'm gonna read a couple of pieces. And the first is called Creativity, kind of on the nose, but you know. What are you doing again? Where are you going again? You look tired, but you don't seem to let that stop you. The world is moving faster now. Can you not see it? You turn to me. You see the worry on my face and you smile. I cannot dictate the pace of the world. I can only follow the light. You turn your walking stick hitting the ground as you make your way towards the light-filled door. After a moment, I do not hear your footsteps. And the last one I will read is called, I am opening. I am opening. Tangled with boldness caught on my tongue, I wrestle with possibility in practice posing like mountains. In this intangible space, I feel shoulders tingling, wings birthing from my shoulder blades. I am flying among the vibrant colors of kites. I am a paper airplane soaring on the effervescence of my youth. I should probably read the whole schedule before I uh, go and sit back down. It's for dramatic effect. Uh, we are now moving into it. Can I take this off? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. I, me and standing in one place is not really uh, work. We're going to move into a time of grounded reflection. So as we do this, I'm going to lead you into a grounded meditation. I'm going to ask that whatever posture is comfortable for you, you take that posture. So it may be sitting in a chair, it may be standing in the back of the room, it may be sitting on or laying on the floor. You do that in your own, uh, to your own discretion. I'm gonna ask you to join me in taking a big, large, deep breath in and hold it and release. Do that again, take a big, large, deep breath in and hold it and release. We're going to do this one more time, and I'm going to ask you that when you release, that you let out an audible sigh. Okay? Take a di big, deep breath in. Hold it. And release. Yeah. Very good. And only after that. So I want you to keep taking your regular breaths. If it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, please do so. If that is uncomfortable for you, you can just gaze at something that's right in front of you. And I'm going to ask you to pay attention to your breath. Maybe that is paying attention to how you feel the air on your upper lip as you breathe in and out. Maybe it's the rise and the fall of your belly or your chest. And in the spirit of Karamu, I'm going to ask you to think about this year, 2023. The events that have happened over the course of these last 12 months. Think about all the times of joy and celebration, the times of pain and grief and frustration and anger. Maybe sadness, maybe peace. And I want you to not judge these moments or linger, but let them wash over you.
as these moments, maybe you're seeing them as images flash through your mind or you're hearing voices of conversations that you've had or however you are experiencing them, I want you to pay attention to your body. Is there any new tension or areas of release? Do you feel your heart quicken with excitement as you think about something that happened this year, or maybe that knot in your stomach? Again, no judgment. If your mind wanders to something else, that's okay. Just gently bring it back to those memories. Maybe in this time you're realizing how resilient you were. And maybe you're facing the truth that it was a hard year. Or maybe you're recognizing all of the gifts and the lessons that you've received. I invite you all to take another big breath with me and hold it, savor it, and release. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes, return to the room. Welcome back. Now I, I turn in dramatic fashion and, and go up here. <laughs> for the next anthem, I ask for your help. In the spirit of creativity, this piece is Kumba. This is the sixth of the seven settings of Kwanzaa songs that this congregation helped me bring to life. And so this was one of the, this was one of the first ones that I, that I completed. And so, um, and I completed it in a community very similar to this. And so, um, and it was born from improvisation. Um, and so we're gonna recreate that improvisatory moment with your help. So let me teach it to you first. It's very simple and everyone can do this. And you're already prepared with a beautiful posture. You've been breathing, you're, sing you're ready to sing. You've already made sounds. Mm, everybody go, mmm, mmm, mmm. All of that warm energy, it's beautiful. And we have an M in the word kumba, say kumba. <clears throat> Listen, ku. <clears throat> Kumba, do that. Kumba, Kumba, Kumba. Listen, Kumba. Good. Enjoy the M in between each one. Listen first, listen. I'll do all three. Kumba, Kumba, Kumba. Your turn. Kumba, Kumba, Kumba. Again.
That was beautiful. Kumba. Habarigani? Kumba. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> there is power in remembering. The reason I had you do a meditation on, I'm gonna sit, can I sit? Because this is, this is not, a, not a sermon, so I'm not gonna stand up on a podium and preach to you. That's not what's happening today. What's happening today is I'm gonna give you a reflection and I'm gonna put you to work. Yay, you didn't know you were participating. There's power in remembering. The reason I had you do a remembrance meditation is because in this fast-paced, social media-filled, media narrative-driven world, we specialize in forgetting. We specialize in creating particular narratives that allow us to remember certain things, but to be, forget the others. And we do so in a way to where people don't recognize that they're actually participating in the forgetting of something that is a part of their liberation. I'll give you an example. The battle with CRT. The battle in our schools and the history books. The ways in which we spin particular stories that say particular details, but leave out important ones, right? Particularly of the person who is telling that story. We're very good at forgetting. We're very good at crafting narratives that leave out particular peoples, particular aspects of the land, particular troublesome things that we'd rather not people want to remember about us or what we've done or what we've participated in. We're good at spinning. It's not just you don't have to have a degree in journalism or media studies in order to do this. We're very good at it. And so when we invoke a meditation of memory, how many of you were like, oh, I, don't, I really don't want to do this. I don't want to remember 2023. I don't want to think about what happened this year. I just want to forget it's the last day of the year. Just let me get through these next 24 hours. 2023 will be gone, and I don't have to remember a thing. Why? Why is the way that we respond to things that are painful is to forget them? Why do we do that? Maybe it's because we don't want to feel the visceralness right in our bodies of what that thing reminds us of. And that's, that's fine, right? Maybe we don't know how to name what is happening in our bodies, in our lives. Maybe we don't have control over the grief or control over the loss or control over the thing that happened to us that made us feel the way we don't want to feel. And we honor and try to figure out how to regain control by forgetting that thing. Does that sound familiar? Maybe it's just what I do, <laughs> right? We use forgetting as a tool that we think is contributing to our healing. But how often has forgetting the thing helped you heal? How often? How often has that happened? There is power in remembering. There is power in saying that was hard. That was wrong. That shouldn't have happened. I feel that in my body now. I'm gonna have to go through the work of metabolizing that experience. You can't do that unless you remember it. What I'm gonna ask you to do today as a community is to, in the words of the Queen Mother of Wakanda, remember who you are. I love that part. Actually, I love that in so many movies, because also The Lion King, right? When Mufasa's dwindling from the clouds and he's trying to get to listen, what does he say? Remember, I can't say it the way James Earl Jones says it, but <laughs> he says, remember, remember who you are. And I think that is what is so important 
about the Kwanzaa celebration because it really is the act of remembering. Remember who you are, not just the stories of struggle and lament. We need to remember those too. Y'all need to remember those. The non-black people, y'all need to remember those, right? But we also need to remember not just the, the tough things, but the creativity, the gifts, the culture, right? This is, this is the rhythm of being able to remember. This holiday was started uh, right after the Watts riots as a way and an act of remembering and reconnecting, right? Not just memory, remember bringing aspects of the community together through a shared cultural experience. It is through this act of remembering that we can continue to heal, but it also requires naming. Our Christian Bible does this. Any of the Psalms you read, particularly the lament Psalms that are like, this is terrible. And da, 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 let me tell you everything that's happening. They're telling you so you can remember, but they also remind God of who God is. Yeah, this is terrible. We're going through this, we're going through that, we're going through this. Remember that one time when you saved our ancestors from the exact same thing? Do you remember that? Do I need to call that to your memory, God? Because you acting like you never did that. Because we're in this situation and we don't know where you are. I'm deeply paraphrasing the psalm, so for those of you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's calling to remembrance for the sake of their liberation. Are you gonna remember what you did for them? Because we need you to do that for us. Can't you see the similarities? Don't you have the power to do this thing? Going off on God, I think we should just do that. I practice that, that's a great spiritual practice. Just saying, it really is. God can hold it. God is bigger than any of the words that you choose to use. If God is a creator of all, then of course, God is bigger than any of the words you choose to use to go off on God. That's all I'm saying. Be free in that. But part of what we need to do as a part of this act, right, as a part of the reasoning for why Kwanzaa exists, as a part of this celebration of Karamu, of this feast, which is why we have snacks, because you can't remember, reassess, recommit to who you are in community and then go home to your separate houses and have lunch and not go and actually talk to each other and have coffee and break bread together. That's part of the commitment that you have to each other. So that's why we always end in a feast. So what we're going to do today is we're going to remember. And in that remembering, we're going to recommit to the thing that, and I'm saying we, but y'all, y'all are gonna to recommit to the thing you said you were gonna do. So here's where your work comes in. There are ushers who have index cards and you are a much larger group than I thought you would be. So we're probably gonna have to, we got like 10 minutes, turn to a couple of the people who are next to you and I want you together to come up with a sentence of what your commitment as a community to liberation is. What is that? Is there a written something somewhere? What is your commitment to liberation? So that's the first sentence, right, as a community. It may be different because we're not doing this in the big group. We don't have the time. <laughs> but what is that for this community that you have been committed to and are a part of? For those of you who are visiting, think about your own communities. But for those of you who are committed to this community, what is your commitment to liberation? Turn to one or two people who are next to you, think about that and write that down. That's the first sentence. What is your commitment to liberation as a community? The second is this. I, you as a person, I'm saying, I'm talking as you now, I'm talking. I commit to give my gifts to this community, whatever that gift is, for the sake of that liberation statement. 
what is your commitment to your own liberation? Remember who you are. And then what is it that you as an individual are gonna offer this community toward that? Questions? You see, I'm here, I'm, I'm teaching now, I'm not preaching. Are y'all good? Y'all know what y'all need to do? You know the commitment that you need to make? Now, I don't know how you're gonna be accountable to this after that's something that you could talk to Reverend Omega. I hope that this sparks a conversation for y'all not only to not only have great, amazing services to celebrate these aspects of Kwanzaa and these different celebrations, but to actually commit to the doing of it when the, when the holiday is done and when it's ordinary time and you're just here, right? That those commitments, you have some ways that y'all are holding each other accountable to how you're gonna participate in the collective liberation of your community. I can't tell you how to do that, but I can get you started. So what is the commitment that this community has to liberation? First question. And what are the gifts that you're gonna offer, offer the community to toward that end? So meet your neighbor, talk for a few minutes. I'll gather you back in five. Yeah. 
Take about one more minute. Okay, go ahead and finish your thoughts. I hope you wrote something down because I'm gonna ask the ushers to come and collect the index cards. We're gonna ask you to come and collect the index cards. What I'm hoping we can do is in the future you can create something maybe with Reverend Omega, maybe with others so that you can begin to see what others wrote and to see the ways in which other people think about your commitment to liberation and their participation in it. I'm also hoping that in the breaking of bread, of pastries, I don't know what's back there, um, in whatever edible is back there and coffee, that you're able to continue these conversations because the celebration of Kwanzaa, the celebration of remembrance, is great as a one-day thing, but it is only as great as a continued commitment that you are willing to make for the sake of your community. I would hate for this to just become a yearly performance and the only time you think about these things. So I'm hoping that this is a seed in the continued work that you will do so that the next time I see you at a Kwanzaa celebration, one, I say Habarigani, y'all like, Kuba! <laughs> but also two, that there are all of these things that you have engaged with that allows these principles to live in this community throughout the year. Okay? Great, normally I'd say amen, but amen. I got an amen. As you're embodying these principles and ideas and commitments that you just talked about, hold those in your hearts as you rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our closing hymn wo ya ya it's number 1020 in your teal hymnal or on the screens above as you're ready and able please rise and join us in singing wo ya ya
closing. I want you to hear this blessing before we blow out our candle. Today, may you rise with the sun. May you let your light so shine that the warmth of your radiance greets those around you like a sweet kiss. May you be a light into darkness. And when you lie your head down to sleep, May the beauty of your sunset be a reminder of all that you are and all that you bring to the world. And may you do it again tomorrow.